Well, hey there, folks, and welcome back to the absolute darkest depths of YouTube. We're gonna go thrifting today because that's all I do because I am a robot, a thrifting robot. That's the only thing I know how to do. <laughs> Sticking around through this video because I'm gonna talk about this concept of making money when you buy something. And I know it sounds contradictory and, well, stupid. And if you disagree, well, you're probably right. And if you don't disagree and you agree, then you're probably also right. Or maybe you're wrong. And maybe it's possible to be right and wrong at the same time. If it is, I don't wanna be wrong. That's not right. I don't want to be right. And we're off to one of my favorite thrift stores where it's senior day, 25% off. I'm not quite a senior. I'm getting closer by the day and I can't wait till one day. My favorite thing as a senior citizen will be getting those discounts. We're going over to the board game section, one of my favorite things. I find this Quelf game. Now, I recognize that as soon as I see it. I've sold this game more than 50 times. I know I can get 18 to 20 ish bucks on Amazon. The price they're asking at the thrift store is five bucks. It's a little high, but I can still double my money and get about $5 out of this. Disney Edition Family Feud. If you ever find anything Disney out in the wilds, definitely look it up. It's not a very well known brand or company or anything, but always worth looking up. Selling for 25 on Amazon, asking for four bucks at the thrift store. So that's coming home. I can make about 10 bucks. Castle Panic. I love these independent released games usually they're pretty good this one wasn't it was a heavy game asking for five at the thrift store and it just didn't sell very well on on ebay and it was heavy to ship left that behind found this minecraft lego legos are obviously really good it's a little beat up the box but uh, i checked out the price even on amazon it's only selling for 20 bucks was a little shocking selling at 15 at the thrift store was far too much money so i left that found this disney trivia game i, I don't talk about this enough that when I'm at thrift stores or garage sales and I'm buying used games, I like to make sure all the game pieces are inside the box. In the case that they're not there, if the game's only a dollar or two, I might still buy it because replacement parts you can find on eBay for pretty cheap if the game's selling for enough. But this game did have all the pieces. Uh, if it's selling for five or six dollars or more, I do always want to make sure all the game pieces because I don't want to risk the five or six dollars. But sometimes I'll just buy a game even if it is a dollar or two and the game pieces and just kind of trust the thrift store or the homeowner that all the game pieces are in there. It's very low risk. I left this behind. It's just not selling for very much on Amazon. And then I find this this duck, um, this rubber ducky, this demon, this kiss figure. Fun fact, that label on the bottom, LPN 1994, that's an Amazon return sticker. That means somebody bought it on Amazon and returned it to Amazon. Wasn't selling for that much, but uh, 20 bucks, I paid five. So this came home with me. Obviously you make money when you sell something and that cash hits your bank account. That's when you legitimately make money. But this concept of, of making money when you buy something, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about buying stuff on thin margin. You go out in the wilds and you're spending say five bucks for something that you can see your research tells you after fees and your purchase price, you're gonna you're gonna clear about say $2. You just have to have some caution with those low margins. You have to leave yourself some wiggle room in your selling price. Because here's the thing, unlike me and my clothes, the world changes. And if you're a reseller, I'm sure this has already happened to you. It's happened to me multiple times where everything looks good at the time that I purchase it. But then when I go to list it, maybe it's a few days later or a week later, and I find that it's no longer selling for that $15 that I thought it was going to sell for. And now the price has dropped to $12 or $10. And now my purchase, it really doesn't look so good. And I don't even know if I'm going to make money anymore. So you have that really thin margin and you don't really have much adjustment that you can do on your price. And to avoid this, obviously the best way to find that is to pay as little as possible up front when you're purchasing something making money when you buy something and duh and that's why on the wilds of garage sales or flea markets or even some select mom and pop thrift stores it's important to just negotiate a little bit to bargain to ask for hey if we make a bundle deal can i pay you 20 bucks instead of 25 because negotiating a purchase from four dollars down to three dollars or two dollars it might not seem like much at the time however when you go to sell it just gives you that extra wiggle room of a dollar or two so you can continue to profit just in case the market goes crazy that race to the bottom price and hey, if the selling price doesn't actually adjust lower, then you've just made an extra a dollar or two on top of that thin margin. Then we find a couple of shelves of brand new sealed DVDs. So I'm going to put the camera down and just see what I can find here. There's a lot of movies to look through. I ended up only finding these four and Clint Eastwood. I found a couple copies of this, this old movie and then uh, Deliverance and this Bible uh, this Bible time favorites, which was selling for $17. I guess I forgot to put that in the video and the kitchen section. I found a couple of, of fun little gadgets, these new in box things, these things, I don't know what they were, but they weren't selling for very much. So I left them behind this piggy pop though. 
I uh, picked it up for two bucks and I'm going to make about five or six dollars on Amazon. These Wilton cookie cutters, same thing, bought it for four, even used. I'm going to make about eight or nine dollars. I like to check out any of the, the makeup and the shampoo because oftentimes you can find stuff that's been discontinued that people are still looking for. People love their brands of deodorants and shampoos and sometimes they can't find them in the store anymore. Sonic Care, same thing. This is an older model. I left these behind. Got a little help from my big brother here. Found this Trivial Pursuit Harry Potter edition. Uh, he found it in the corner, which is ironically, that's where I used to hide when he used to beat me up as a kid, selling for 28 bucks. So it's a great score. I'm gonna make about 15 to $18 on that Harry Potter game. I love finding these bags of toys in this random bucket section. Playmobil, uh, hit or miss. I usually buy these Playmobil uh, figures until I have a, a, a section of 20 or so and then lot them up and, and see what happens. And then shorts, it is the season, summer. Spring and summer is, is coming, so there's a, a bit of a premium for, for shorts. I find these kind of retro body glove, kind of a fun design, and uh, I think I paid $3 for these if I remember correctly and I can make like 10 to 12 dollars on those. Let's take a look at the rough numbers. I invested 39 dollars today. Gross sales are going to be around 203 bucks. The the platform selling fees and the shipping fees they're going to cost me about 85 dollars. Supplies for all this stuff to get packed up to get shipped out it's going to be about three bucks. Net profits is only going to be about 76 dollars today. I do set aside 15 percent of those net profits for taxis. Definitely not a tax pro. It's just that's what I do every year. It seems to be working out pretty well. Now travel, list, pack, and ship. We're looking at about two hours travel round trip. List I'm going to say another half hour and then to pack and ship this stuff up is, uh, is another half hour. So we're looking at about uh, a three hour time consumption hourly wage that works out to about $25 post tax after that's 15% it's going to be about $21 an hour it's not a home run by any means today and that's the reality of of this online reselling business some days you have really good days I'm used to the 50 to $80 an hour price point but some days this happens it, I still had a lot of fun I still did it on my own time on my own schedule and I wouldn't trade it for any desk job in the world